My name is Christy Carlson Romano. I'm the original voice of Kim Possible, uh, and Disney asked me to come back to play a small part called Poppy Blue. She's a huge mega pop star, and she helps Kim get to her mission. And that's kind of an important throwback because for people who know the original series, she did that all the time. Kim doesn't have her driver's license, so she had to get like the Marines to help her to get to a mission or a big pop star. And so I am like a throwback to that, and I'm pretty excited to be sort of a part of that history. How did you personally get into this sort of acting industry where you got the opportunity to play Kim Possible? I started very young. I was a child actor at six years old. But I didn't get to work for Disney until I was 14, uh, where I started on a show called Even Stevens, which was co-starring with Shia LaBeouf. And I also did a uh, DCOM called Kid at Kelly, which was co-starring with Hilary Duff. So then they asked me to audition for Kim Possible, and I got the job. There's been a lot of excitement around this movie uh, because it's just the remake of an iconic TV show. So how, what do you feel that this film does best in comparison to the TV show? That's a really great question. I think that this film really captures the world of Kim Possible. So for fans of the first, you know, original production, I think that they'll see so many things that are similar, but it's different because it's live action. So the explosions are real and the people are real. Uh, the stakes probably seem a bit higher when you're actually putting real people in dangerous situations. So it's gonna be a, like a big adventure and it's gonna feel like a big movie uh, and it's a lot of fun. You know, about 16, 17 years have gone by since we did this as a television series. Yeah. You could take the kids that were the fans of the TV series all those years ago and you know, and put some, put, put some years on them, and now they've got these kids now that are watching this. What I love about it is that the message is still the same. Yeah. I think that they kept the integrity of, of, of about, um, in, it really is about integrity, and it's about loving yourself, and it's about holding up for what you believe in, for what is right, for setting a good example, and being a hero not only to the people around you but to yourself and I think they're good messages for kids I, I think we need more heroes what piece of advice would you give to anyone aspiring to make it in the entertainment industry go to my website Nancy <laughs> <laughs> no there's, there's a lot of frequently asked questions where I will you, know, you can be enlightened on um, what books to read how to take lessons and who to, who, who to take lessons from if you live in LA how to make it if you're not from LA like there's so many opportunities today for kids to you know set up your own system at home and create your own webisode you know you, you, the, the, the key is that you need to just be active you need to just do something and you never know you may be the next show or person or you know artist that comes up with something that goes completely viral so I personally am a huge fan of your work and what you do. I've seen so many videos and so many episodes of you in it, like for The Simpsons and things yeah. like that. So what got you into like exploring how you use your voice to, to make a career out of it? Well, when I was Kim Possible's age, um, I was about 16 or so when I was in high school and I was on the speech team. Mm -hmm. And I would travel around the Midwest and do just tell stories. And I would come up with different voices and sometimes playing seven, eight voices. and. Mm -hmm. I, I would get comments from the judges saying, you've got an unusual voice, you should do cartoons for a living. That was so novel, that was so unusual. I thought, wow, people get paid to do that? This was in the Midwest, they don't, they don't exactly make you know, animation in the Midwest. But I liked that idea, so I just started to pursue opportunities like that. And I did theater, you know, I did more, I did more competitions, I got a scholarship to go to Ohio University and be on their speech team and eventually hooked up with one of the pioneers of the industry, Dawes Butler, mm -hmm. who was Huckleberry Hound, Yogi Bear, Quick Draw McGraw, and I, I grew up with his characters. Mm -hmm. So I wrote him and then we, start, we started to correspond back and forth with me in the Midwest and him out in LA. So that was really it. It's like if you can find someone who you admire and who you can emulate, that's, that's not a bad thing for you. What's one of your favorite characters to voice and why? Oh gosh, I, it's very hard. I've got a, 
I've got a few that yeah. I really love doing for different reasons. It's like I've got a couple kids and to pick out, you know, she's my favorite, he's my favorite, and that's not right. Um, but Bart is the easiest right. one by far to do. He's real simple to slip <laughs> into. Nelson Muntz is like, he's the most challenging one. Ha <laughs> ha! But I love him mm -hmm. because he, he's a bully, and yet there's a sensitive side to him mm -hmm. where he talks about the incredibly hot Mrs. Simpson. And he has a crush on her, and he'll do anything for her. It's, it brings out a sweetness in him. Um, Ralph Wiggum is, you know, his voice is way up here, and he can say just about anything to make people laugh. I'm Idaho. You know, where does that come from? That's, I like doing him. And Todd Flanders is a little bit more serious, but I get to anoint their feet. <laughs> you know, and Maggie Simpson, ah, she doesn't really talk. <laughs> But she does that. Right. Um, I'm Chucky, uh, Chucky Finster. And when I do Chucky, and I tell people that I'm Chucky, they just cannot believe that. <laughs> and of course, Rufus the Naked Mole Rat. Nice. <laughs> and that's just, that's an upper respiratory exercise when I do him.